Okay, next is uh, Mohit Tikrewal from University of Michigan. Uh, and he's going to show us how to apply formal verification to a new domain of approximating solutions of differential equations um, numerically. Um, hello, everyone. So I'm Mohit, and I'll be presenting on formal verification of consistency of a finite difference scheme. Yeah. So typically, the natural and physical systems are modeled using differential equations. And, they are, uh, and some, some of the uh, examples are presented in this slide. So these differential equations are basically impossible to solve analytically. So in the domain of computational science, we look for uh, a numerical approximation to these solutions, uh, to these equations to uh, get some solutions out of it. So uh, what's a numerical scheme? So a numerical scheme can be thought of as a computational method to approximate solutions to a mathematical problem. So there are typically lots of uh, uh, numerical schemes available, like finite difference scheme, finite element scheme, spectral, etc. We'll be talking about finite difference scheme in this uh, talk. So finite difference approximations are widely used in discretizing ordinary and partial differential equations. So let us consider uh, a, 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 a domain X which is discretized into finite number of points, and we have a continuous function U of X. This continuous function is being mapped to a discrete domain and uh, the derivatives are expressed in terms of these discrete function values. Since we are computing uh, an approximation to the derivatives, so uh, the next logical thing will be to talk about an order of approximation. So order of approximation determines how fast the approximate solution converges to the true solution. And it's, it's being determined by uh, truncation error analysis. So the error is defined as the difference between a true derivative and an approximate derivative. So in this talk, we have an example of a scheme uh, uh, which, uh, which computes the derivative using two uh, uh, discrete function values at xi plus delta x and xi minus delta x. And error is defined as the difference between true derivative and the approximate derivative. So in order to get the, uh, in order to compute the error, we use the uh, Taylor series expansion of the functions. And uh, if after doing certain algebraic operations, we conclude, we, con we conclude that the error is of order delta x square. Yeah, so now we'll be talking about the consistency property of this scheme. So uh, the consistency property basically says that if you're given a partial differential equation, let's say L equals to F and a finite difference scheme, uh, L delta x, V equals to F delta x, where L is your differential operator, for instance, d by dx, then the consistency property says that if you have a continuous function, then the derivative, the two derivative L phi and the approximate derivative L delta x, they tend to zero in the limit delta x goes to zero. So the question is, is our scheme consistent? Uh, so let's, let's, let's analyze the error term. So error term is about delta x square. And if you take the limit delta x goes to zero, uh, truncation error goes to zero. So indeed, our scheme is consistent. Now, we now uh, a major part of our project was to uh, translate this into a formal uh, setting. So we we sort of check this mathematical form in uh, into uh, proof uh, proof assistant called Cog. So we have a theorem statement of this form, where which which essentially says that truncation uh, error is of order delta x square. So we use the Taylor Lagrange theorem. Uh, to prove the statement of the consistency. And a Lagrange reminder is for order delta x square. Uh, so we have this. Now, now moving on to the implementation in Cox. So what do we already have? We already have a Taylor Lagrange which is available in the interval library in Cox. And we have like lemmas on basic arithmetic operations in Reals and Coquelicot library. Now, when we started doing this uh, project, we had certain challenges. And some of the challenges were to reduce the proof statement into a form where we can apply the Cock Taylor uh, Lagrange theorem. And we also had some issues regarding the right ordering and instantiation of quantifiers to take care of dependencies and the invocation of the big O notation. So the approach that we followed here was to uh, break the statement, which, which, is, uh, uh, which is presented over in the right extreme right corner into two small st statements and introduce them as separate lemmas. So we have like uh, we have defined f of x and g of x, where f of x is a statement of Taylor Lagrange theorem for u of x plus delta x, and g of x is a Taylor Lagrange theorem on x minus delta x. And we have separately uh, like uh, proved uh, uh, 
their consistency properties and integrated them as uh, into a larger proof as two different lemmas. Yeah. So in this way, we have uh, verified a consistency property. So now having verified the consistency property, the question is what's next? Right. So uh, the so in order to explain this, let us go through the properties of a numerical scheme. So the numerical scheme has three basic properties. One is consistency. Uh, there is stability. Stability basically says that if if you if you are uh, uh, carrying a numerical computation, then the error at each iteration they remain bounded, so that your uh, solution does not explode at the end. And then you have another property called convergence, which is the holy grail of uh, this entire analysis, which says that if you have a true solution and an approximate solution, then under the limit, your discretization step goes to zero. The uh, difference between the true solution and the approximate solution goes to zero. So we have verified the consistency property, and now we are currently working on proving the stability and convergence property of the scheme. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, so then I'll ask you a question. What, um, how do you think these techniques would, um, would generalize to, um, to a more general scheme? Like either a different scheme, with like a different finite different scheme, or even like maybe like a finite element scheme or something more complicated? I mean, uh, if you have a numerical scheme, they, they, they essentially have these three basic properties that you need to satisfy for the scheme. So if, you, if you're proving a property for, let's say, a finite different scheme, you have to, uh, like, this, prop this proof gets translated into any other scheme, let's say, finite element scheme. So the properties are the same. You just need to verify each property individually for different schemes. Hi. Um, have you thought about extending your proof for uh, for when the finite difference is operating on floats as opposed to reals? Yeah. Uh, so this answer has been uh, performed for real variables. For real variables. Yeah. Yes. So what would happen if you did for floats? Uh, yeah. So that's a big question that we are trying to address. Like this is one of the future works uh, of our future works. How to bring into picture uh, the floating point arithmetic into this entire setting. So we, are, we, will, we will be working on that in future. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.